Welcome to the CEC Report. It's the 25th of September. I'm Robert Barwick and I'm joined by CEC Leader Craig Isherwood. Welcome Craig. Yeah, thanks Robbie. In this week's CEC Report, will Australia drop its Russia phobia and join the solution in Syria? And who is Malcolm Turnbull? So first, will Australia drop its Russia phobia and join the solution in Syria? Craig, there's a, been a big sea change in the Syria situation. Of course, there needed to be. It's it's you know one of the it's been one of the flashpoints for a world war for a while, mm -hmm. along with Ukraine, um, that could have easily have sparked into some escalated into something bigger. More importantly, there's a flood of refugees coming out of there, millions and millions that just show that this has become a totally failed state. And it's put the it's put the reality of the war on the doorstep of all those European nations, which previously. Exactly. Of course, we're not too concerned about you know things until it hits them domestically. Well, they were, yeah, they, they've they, those nations in Europe are members of NATO, right? They've participated by default in the military adventures of that have been led by the United States and the United Kingdom, and unfortunately France, that have caused these problems. They they overthrew Gaddafi in Libya, and a flood of refugees started coming out of North Africa. And I think, Robbie, also we heard this morning in a briefing that uh, there's a really stunning development whereby the US is going to put 20 nuclear weapons bombs into Germany. And these are B-61s, I believe. On planes. On and, and they're going to be mounted on German planes, flown by German pilots, but the decision to bomb is going to be made by the US. Yeah. So here you have, I mean, this is this is... I mean, I've talked a lot on this show about the issue of sovereignty within a nation. Yep. We've seen Greece smashed in the past because the EU, for example, destroying the sovereignty of Greece through not being able to produce its own currency, right? It's, it's, it's tied into the EU system. Here you have another manifestation of this. A NATO country, Germany, part of the EU, is now being dictated to by the US about how it's going to deploy its own so-called sovereign military. This is the insanity of the situation we find ourselves in. It's causing huge ruckuses right now in Germany because effectively it's really putting a spotlight on the, the way that the Germany is being used as a puppet. Mm. And that's, that's the point. The rev when the revelations of this come out, people really react. And there's this, Germany was one of the aggressors in World War II, Craig, and to their credit since World War II, the German people have shied away from being militaristic. Japan has just had a very divisive um, bill go through its parliament the diet that can make Japan militaristic again. The Japanese people are very upset over that. But why has Japan done it? At a, basically to participate in these American follies, right? Mm. And, and you've also got the issue now that Merkel's coming out because Germany is accepting so many refugees. She's saying now that the West has to collaborate with Assad in order to solve the problem in Syria. Well, that's the point. So that what you what you're seeing, Russia made a move. Russia made Russia said, okay. Um, because uh, Russia, Russia was looking at the situation in Syria and saw that ISIS getting, the more America supposedly fought ISIS with, country, with our support, the more ISIS got strengthened. Which right? of course the, the truth of the matter is that uh, Obama was using ISIS as a means of trying to smash Assad. Exactly. So, yeah. so the, the, the Russians thought if we don't do something, Damascus will be overrun by ISIS. And so they said, okay, we, they made a noise, we're going to get more involved here. And there was this huge reaction. but. The, the more the Americans and the British have complained about it, they, they've been isolated because what you just said about Merkel, the European countries that are being flooded with the refugees coming out of Syria, they're saying, no, no, something does have to be done. And this, this agenda that we've put first for many years of toppling Assad, that isn't working. That's mm. caused this problem. Mm. Here's ISIS is the actual problem here. Let's work with Russia and by default Assad to actually defeat this ISIS threat once and for all. And that has shown up the US side, right? But it's changed, so R Russia's move has changed the whole dynamic. Um, and that's a, big diff that's a big deal when European countries that are actually NATO members, and therefore by default been involved in, in a t escalating a tension against Russia, are now saying, well, we think we need to work with Russia. And it's isolated Obama, and it's isolated the British. Well, it's isolated him so much, Robbie, he's had to come out and actually dump this idea of regime yep. change with Assad. And see, um, it's also because of the strategic changes in Syria, you're going to see a meeting come up on Monday this week between President Putin and Obama, which is the last thing Obama has been wanting to have on his agenda. 
But the strategic situation has changed so much in Syria that that's what's actually Obama's being had forced upon him. Now, Lyndon LaRouche has made some recent comments about the nature of uh, Obama. I mean, this guy is a narcissist. You've seen what he's been able to do. He's been promoting war left, right and centre over the entire term of his, of his presidency. And Mr LaRouche makes the point you can't underestimate the sorts of dangerous, dangerous tricks that Obama can get up to, like creating other wars. Now, that, that is a worry because you look at Obama and you realise that he is like a cornered rat. He's in a very, mm. he, he's in, put in a position he doesn't like to be there, so he may lash out and do something which is completely off the planet, but within the country. And he, and he doesn't have to be re-elected. It's all ego-driven now. That's right. And, and, and this can be a real problem. But just, just to put some meat on those bones, so the, the, the big shift happened this week the, the, from the American side. That's the, mm. the sign that America was, was seeing, okay, and when I say America, it's, it's America and Britain actually, that they're, they're sort of peas in a pot on this. So the first thing that happened was Obama got his defence secretary, Ashton Carter, to call the Russian defence minister, whose name is Sergei Shoigu, and that was the first military-to-military contact at le that level since April 2014. Mm. So for almost 18 months, the two militaries haven't been talking. The foreign ministers have been talking, but the, if the militaries aren't talking, there's a huge scope for mistakes to be made, right? Where actions on either side can get misinterpreted. And it wasn't the Russians who broke off the contact, it was the Americans. So the fact that Obama did this was, it was because when he's seeing his, you know, NATO allies abandoning him, he's, he realised, well, something's got to shift. And then, as you said, he's, not, he's now agreed to meet Putin. But we know that that's been forced on the British and the Americans. We'll talk about the British more in a minute. That's been forced on them. Um, and you have to expect that they're going to try and pull some shenanigans to get the power, in their mind, because they're not interested in solving the Syria problem, Craig. They no. want the, the balance of power back in their favour. So we'll have a, um, just one other thing that's happened though before we take a break. Just that that has ha, ha, that's contributed to a, a shift in Obama is that he's now mired in a scandal. His administration that is almost identical to Bush and Cheney's weapons of mass destruction lies, because CENTCOM, which is the Central Command, the U.S. military is divided up into the commands that govern the different regions of the world. CENTCOM. Analysts have complained to the Pentagon Inspector General of Intelligence that the intelligence that they've prepared about ISIS in Syria and Iraq has been changed as it's been gone to the White House. Right? So they've said, here's the real situation on the ground with ISIS. When it gets to the White House, it's been turned into we're winning the fight against ISIS. And the, 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 the intelligence has been faked, right? Mm. And in fact, there's a certain irony here for those who are old enough to know. One of the ways that it's, that's been, one of the things that's been governing this cooking up of intelligence is um, uh, the, the, they've interpreted success in Iraq and Syria against ISIS by body count. In other words, the more of ISIS they kill, that's the more successful they are. And Craig, this is a throwback to Vietnam because um, Bob McNamara, Robert McNamara, who was the Defence Secretary under um, uh, Johnson. Johnson, he used this method that to pr pretend they were having success in Vietnam, which got him more and more mired into Vietnam. He got the name Body Count Bob, mm -hmm. right? Because it was a totally statistical, ridiculous way of analysing the situation. That's the insanity that's in the White House again. And these things are conspiring co and combining to force shifts upon them. And one of the reasons we're giving so, so much weight here, of course, is because we are part of this mix. Yeah, I was about to say, Rob, because look, you got, when we talk about these issues, you can't be devoid and say, well, somehow we're not involved. I mean, Julie Bishop and the you know, Prime Minister are intimately involved in these policy directions. So we're not innocent in this. Yeah. Well, let's have a quick break and we'll come back and let's talk at the British side. Welcome back to the CEC Report, where we're discussing will Australia drop its Russia phobia and join the solution in Syria? Now, Craig, one of the reasons we know that there's, there's an intention by the Anglo-American side, even though they've, they're being forced to concede to some of the things that Russia is doing because Russia is getting European support for it, their side intends to sabotage this is because of the shenanigans in the United Kingdom. 
The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, David Cameron, is still pushing ahead to try and get Parliament to authorise military action in Syria. Now, the last time he did this was 2013, and the UK Parliament voted it down. But that was to authorise the toppling, basically the overthrow of Assad, right? So they voted that down. There they're trying to put it in different terms to say, oh, no, it's all about, it's all about defeating ISIS. The problem is, if they're doing it what, about the way Obama's been doing it up until now, they're using ISIS as a smokescreen to continue this toppling of a, this over regime change against Assad. Um, now, here's the thing, though. So that, we know that's their intention, and, and, and they're pushing ahead with that. And uh, if, if, they were, if they were more genuine, they'd be also be working with Russia. David Cameron Craig has his own problems. And they, and the, they, they come under the title of Pig Gate. And if you haven't seen the news, um, we reported here in the last few weeks with great excitement the election of Jeremy Corbyn as the new leader of the Labor Party. This is actually a problem for Cameron as well because Corbyn, he will not get Corbyn support for an intervention in Syria. This is right? a guy, Cameron called the election of Corbyn a, a national security issue, Robert. Yes. I mean, this is insane. The fact that you could call an elected loyal opposition a national security. Well, he went threat. really over the top. Like, and, and the media supported Cameron, so the attacks on Corbyn have been intense and unbelievable, right? They've just tried to slaughter the guy, including digging up 40-year-old affairs he had, right, as some kind of sex scandal. But, um, but it was with a woman, Robbie. But it was with a but woman. With a pig. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? Because um, a key Tory operator, Lord Ashcroft, now, Lord Ashcroft has been their big fundraiser in the Tory party for a long time. In fact, Lord Ashcroft was the British aristocrat who donated a million dollars in 2004 to John Howard's re-election campaign in Australia. We got a million dollar donation from overseas so that Howard could get re-elected after he'd you know, got Australia involved in the Iraq war here. So this guy has had a falling out with Cameron and he's written a tell-all book. And the biggest scandal in the book is that he, he writes that as a university student at Oxford, Cameron was part of an elite club. So you could forgive him for, you know, people do stupid things at, 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 as young people. But the point is, as a British class society, Craig, whatever they say, it's entrenched, right? And this is how it gets entrenched. And when the elites send their kids to Oxford, they want them to come out even more elitist. And part of this, I had this dining club and David Cameron um, reportedly committed obscene acts with the head of a pig Right, and so no one has been able to eat bacon ever since this mess, this, this news came out in the UK. It's called Pig Gate, isn't it? They're, that's yeah. what they're calling it Pig Gate. Anyway, people might have known something about that. However, it's much more important. They're, they're, that, that's that's one thing. It, it puts a different complexion on the attacks it on means Corbyn. It's, David Cameron is now under attack because yes. there are certain factions in the UK that necessarily don't like the direction the Cameron government's taking. They also see that the Corbyn factor is such an important influence now in determining which way the UK is exactly. going that they're freaked out that this old method is not going to work anymore. And so one of the other revelations in the book, though, this Ashcroft book, is that Cameron misled Obama on Libya. And this is key, Craig, because viewers, regular viewers of our program would know we, we never talk about a, a, a America as the big dominant force in the world. It's always British America because America, Imperial America is a is, is just copying Imperial Britain. Is that a bit like how um, Tony Blair misled George Bush? It's the same, same thing. exactly the same dynamic. Yep. Um, the, the, it's the British who are the masters of imperialism. America in, since World War II has been utilised by the British to, to continue the imperialism that frankly is operating at the le is, is directed from the level of Wall Street and, and the City of London banks. So this is key because Libya was fine until they went and overthrew Gaddafi, brutally murdered him, and then look at the mess coming out of North Africa now. That's just that's, that was the first wave of refugees hitting the, mm. the um, mm. Europe. And this is a big deal for Lord Ashcroft to say, well, uh, Cameron just, you know, put put the fix in on this to, to get Obama, make sure Obama got involved, right? So it's making it's damaging Cameron no end, right? And so that the, the imperial faction in the UK that are trying to keep pushing this regime of change agenda and use Obama to do it is actually severely weakening. Um, now, what I want to report now is that the in terms of getting parliamentary authorization for what they for an attack on Syria. The Labor Party 
has already started circulating a statement. There will be a Labor Party conference next week in the UK. And the statement is, this is what, the, this is what their wording of their statement um, that they're calling on Parliament to consider in military intervention in Syria. That, that they say, conference believes the parliamentary Labor Party should oppose any such extension into Syria unless the following conditions are met. Clear and unambiguous authorization for such a bombing campaign from the UN. That, that's code for Russia and China have to approve. Right? Well, that's the way, Robert, just quickly. You know, sanctions, wars, anything has to be approved by the United Nations. But you've seen this usurpation of this whole process by the US and the UK for many years now, particularly yeah, yeah. the sanctions on Russia. And that's how the Iraq war came about, that's right? That's right. Um, they call for a comprehensive European Union-wide plan is in place to provide humanitarian assistance to the increased number of refugees that even more widespread bombing can be expected to lead to. Such bombing is exclusively targeted at military targets directly associated with Islamic State and is not aimed at securing regime change in Syria. Um, and then any military action is subordinated to international diplomatic efforts including the main regional powers, to bring the Syrian civil war to an end. So I've just paraphrased that a bit. So Craig, just briefly, the question for us as Australia is, are we going to, we've, we've Abbott, first under Rudd actually, and then Abbott and Bishop, we've done the bidding of the United States and Europe and, British, and the British on Syria, and we've helped them stuff up the situation there, frankly. We've now got a new Prime Minister that's coinciding with these shifts. Question is, what are we going to do? Are we going to assist with the real solution or assist the Anglo-Americans to sabotage it? We should withdraw from the entire process, Robbie. We don't need to have, as a sovereign nation, our noses stuck so far up this, the rear end to the US or the UK. What the hell are we doing here? Is this another Gallipoli event? I yep. mean, what? it's the same issue. Why is Australia, population 23 million in this area, involved in all these things? Right, it's because we're used as like the, uh, Julie Bishop, the deputy sheriff of the UK, the British, the British system, in order to enforce policies, and we're the willing dupes because of this. And, and, and for a hundred years, we've been canon. Fodder. This is an issue of sovereignty, Robbie. Come back mm. to the issue. And a lot of people don't understand this. And I had discussions on a TV program this last week, exactly about this issue. People want to gloss over it. National sovereignty, and the, the the provision of sovereignty for nations, is the structure by which you build a, a nation. Right, if you destroy that or you play it down, you destroy the capacity to actually build the sort of economy that you need with inside a nation. And what is happening is that, of course, we've never become a sovereign nation state. We're simply a, a, you know, an extension of the, uh, the British Empire in the form of a self-governing colony. Go back and read our constitution. It's mm. never been transformed into being a sovereign nation state. And consequently, our whole system of governance is directed from, the, from that point of view. So you've got foreign minister after foreign minister after foreign minister racing around the world, sticking its nose in Ukraine, in Syria, and all these places with some sort of authority when we're not even a sovereign nation state yet. Yep. Uh, and that's how, I mean, we actually looked at correctly as a joke amongst a lot of the major players in, in the world today because who the hell are we actually to do this? We have no authority, but we seem to stick our nose in where it's not wanted all the time. All right, that's, that's a very good perspective, Craig. So let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about who is Malcolm Turnbull. Welcome back to the CEC Report. Finally, who is Malcolm Turnbull? So, Craig, we've got a new Prime Minister, and he's very debonair and sophisticated. He's the darling of the... As we say, the, brute, the blue rinse scent, Robbie. He is I mean, the, <laughs> if you, the darling. If you talk to many people, they love him because the blue blood, a, blue rinse scent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's like the boy or the son that some, many people didn't have, right? And he's been playing that card actually since day one of his prime ministership. But there's much more sinister stuff, I believe, behind his. Well, let's do background. a quick. Let's do a quick CV, right? Just to highlight some of the things, because yeah, he had a, he had a long career before he got into Parliament, and it, 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 it defines who he is in my in our view. So, first of all, he's not this is not unique about him, but he's one of them. He's a Rhodes Scholar, right? Now, what's a Rhodes Scholar? Well, when you're when you're picked to be a Rhodes Scholar, you're usually a student, so that doesn't mean you're some kind of um, uh, world mastermind at that point, except you're picked to be groomed to be one, effectively. The, the Rhodes Scholarship is run by the Imperial Faction of the United Kingdom. 
Cecil Rhodes, who set it up, was a racist, misogynistic pig, right? And in fact, his driving ambition was to, um, as the British Empire was, was starting to give way to the rise of the United States, he was determined that it, the, to keep the British Empire going as the dominant empire in the world, including reconquering the United States, right? Anyway, so they set up this Rhodes Scholarship and so they get these young guys and take them to the UK and they drill them in their world outlook. So he's that. He was, his, his career was really launched, right? What, what put him on the path to absolute success was when he was the lawyer for Kerry Packer. And he was the lawyer for Kerry Packer at a time where one of the biggest cover up in, in Australian his, cover ups in Australian history occurred. Um, they had the Costigan Commission, which was the Royal Commission to the Ship Painters and Dockers Union. It was about drug running and organised crime and racketeering operating through that union. But Frank Costigan, the fearless commissioner, he identified a, a, a person as the Mr Big of this scene that, it, that was identified by the codename Goanna, right? And the Goanna was Kerry Packer. And Turnbull wrote Kerry Packer's statement admitting to being the Goanna, but denying all the charges, etc. Turnbull was right in the mix of this, trying to stop this thing from going anywhere. Um, it didn't go anywhere because Bob Hawke got elected and immediately shut it down, declared Kerry Packer to be a great Australian. They shut down the commission. There's, there's about six volumes of evidence of that commission, Craig, that are still to this day, right? But when Frank Costigan died a few years ago, he went to his grave saying he had no regrets for going after Kerry Packer. We're supposed to believe it was all fictitious, all based on nothing. Well, he had a different perspective, right? So that, that's interesting. Um, the next major thing we want to highlight about Turnbull is he was a partner of Goldman Sachs, the most powerful investment bank in the world. He actually brought Goldman Sachs to Australia, right? So he was the managing partner from 1997 to 2001 of Goldman Sachs Australia. That's how he made his fortune. Goldman Sachs was described a few years ago by... Um, uh, Rolling Stone magazine, Matt Taibbi, as a, a, like a vampire squid which has its tentacles wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. And that was, that was put in the context of Goldman Sachs is the leading carbon trading bank in the world. But it's a scam. Carbon trading is a scam. They're just using it to rip the public off, right? Speculating on carbon like they speculate on everything else. And then it's no surprise, therefore, from that involvement, that as a minister, when, when Turnbull got involved in the Howard government, um, we know what he is now, but he's, he's got green fascist streaks all through him. And that was shown in the Murray-Darling, because as the minister for um, water, he shut down the Murray-Darling basin by, he's supposedly a Republican, but he applied the Ramsar Wetlands Treaty, which was Prince Philip's World Wildlife Fund's first achievement, this Ramsar Wetlands Treaty, in the late 60s, he applied that to Australia to shut down irrigation in the Murray-Darling Basin. Yeah, we've got plenty to say about this, Robbie, in our publications, but I think this is the key, is that you have the December Paris meeting of the... Of the IPCC. Green, the IPCC coming up. There's enormous momentum building so that they don't make mistakes. It's the same Copenhagen conference, which was a disaster. Now, you know, you've got Malcolm Turnbull, who is very pro-green. Uh, we played a crucial role in several trading. years years ago in overturning him and getting uh, Abbott elected by putting a focus on this. So it's coming back around to the same fight again. This time it's more serious. Yeah, and the, the, there will be consequences if they do achieve a global treaty there like they intend to. And Turnbull will sign us up to that. So we have to stop that. But we've run out of time for this show. So thanks for tuning in. Tune in next week for more of the CEC Report.